Max Olson joins us a day after normal and the story out in the athletic Pig 12 looking west, Pac-12 looking for a TV deal, what we're hearing on realignment, Max and Stuart Mandel. Max, thank you very much for your time. Of course, we've had some of the quotes or one of the quotes in the story was with Mac Rhodes on our show. What in particular did you feel like it was time to write this specific story today? Uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on as always, um, and, and kudos to you for asking the right questions of Mac Rhodes, because I think Brett has done a pretty yeah. good job recently of uh, kind of limiting the leaks and uh, and not having uh, the ADs and other folks talking on this stuff as much, so again, kudos to you for asking the right questions, but, you know, to be honest, my phone kind of started blowing up at the beginning um, about um, people um, here, here, you know. It's all as you guys know. It's it's difficult in these times um, when the when this stuff is like going on to kind of separate rumors from reality and this stuff. So just a lot of phone calls over the coast uh, over the course of the last four days and checking in with people on on all sorts of different sides of this stuff um, to try to kind of get a real sense of of where this is at. Um, and and certainly as we reported today, um, you know I think. There's really, all, as has been the case for the past eight months, there's, there's really two sides of the story. Uh, what the Pac-12 thinks is going on and, and kind of their their belief that this will all be okay. And then uh, certainly on the Big 12 side, um, real optimism right now that, uh, that the, the opportunity is coming to uh, make this move. Do you think that there is enough um, division in the league right now to make this happen? At the end of the, like at the end of this year, just call it a day. Or do you think this is the first step of what will be several of a begrudgingly, you know, tied together unit for a four or five years before it happens again? Yeah, it's it's a great question um, because you could I could definitely see that like these the Pac-12 presidents obviously are um, risk averse. I think they're they're obviously they view this stuff differently, um, you know, in terms of academics over athletics and. Certainly, uh, we, we have seen that from, from the way that they chose not to expand when they had their opportunity in the summer 21 with all this Big 12 chaos. Um, like, you could see them saying, you know, it just seems like the safer thing to do is take a short deal, even if we don't love the money, even if we don't love the distribution, and, and just, um, you know, reassess this in 2030 and see where the Big 12 is at and all that. But um, I, I think you've got a clear – even if they were to stick together and get a, a, an, you know, acceptable deal, I think you're still going to have a problem with Oregon and Washington um, because I think it's, it makes sense for those the leaders of those schools to think that unequal revenue sharing makes sense for what they're bringing to the Pac-12. Um, and I think certainly they are the ones of, of the 10 um, that realistically could, could have a few different options, especially if the Big Ten ever – um, you know, had a change of heart and, and felt that it wanted to be in, uh, expand its West Coast presence. Max, any idea of where we stand on a story that kind of popped up for a second and then sort of faded away again, but the Pac-12 expansion piece, SMU, San Diego State, you know, just a couple weeks ago, there was uh, Klyovkov at the SMU game in Dallas, and that seems to have cooled off a little bit. I understand that's probably because the TV deal is, is going to play a big role in that, but any idea where they stand and, and how that sways one way or the other the folks in, in the Pac-12 right now and, and securing the future, so to speak? Yeah, I think when, when, when George took the in-person visit to SMU, I think it certainly got all of us wondering, had the order of operations changed on this a little bit? Was it important for them to add members to improve the deal? I, I, think, that, I think it's still a matter of get the TV deal done first if you can and then um, expand after that. I think from just from the conversations that Stu and I had this week, I think the sense I got was, A, I don't know that it, at this point there is a lot of consensus about even an as easy a candidate as San Diego State for them. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, obviously those conversations get more serious after a deal. But at this point, it doesn't even really seem like there's a, a real unanimous feeling about, um, you know, San Diego State or SMU. And, you know, to be honest, for the sense we got from, from talking to um, industry sources that are experts on this stuff, there is a sense that um, San Diego State and uh, SMU would, uh, you know, dilute the value of the, the Pac-12 media deal. Max, a uh, question for me is, is did, and, and you guys got your stuff and you both are incredible at what you do and the other stories that have come out. Do you feel like somebody else that's not USC or UCLA or even not the four corner schools wanted to see this story out to see what the reaction would be? <laughs> 
No, it's it's pretty hard to get people to talk to you right now. Okay. That's, just the, that's just the reality. That's my kid getting in the car here screaming. Hey, bud. Um, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. That's not um, good. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, no. It, this is not uh, this is not coming from uh, motivated parties within the Pac-12 um, necessarily. I think it's um, you know it, it, again, it's hard to get people in the Big 12 or the Pac-12 on the record about this stuff and and really the sense of where they think this is going. So. Um, you know, lots of lots of phone calls to lots of people um, inside and outside of these conferences. Do you feel that there would there are some schools that are more motivated than others to uh, I- I- explore all possibilities? Yeah, I do. I think if you're talking about the four corner schools, um, I think there are some that are. Um, uh, it seems like they're more open to this, and there are some that seem more resistant. I think that pretty consistently, I think Arizona State publicly has been more resistant to this, whether it's Ray Anderson or their president. Um, I think Utah has, has seemingly been pretty resistant to the idea. Um, we'll, we'll see if the, the tune um, changes on that. And, uh, you know, but I think that on the Arizona and Colorado side, I, I think um, the sense I get is that, that, that maybe those are a, a little bit more realistic in terms of uh, what the, the value that they bring to the Big 12 and, and maybe, uh, you know, them understanding uh, the, the upside of making a change. Max, I know that you know. There's been various plays like us, and, and you you talked about it. But this is this has been out there for a while. The whole Pac-12 part of things, uh, Big 12, you know, potentially benefiting. But how much did Clemson and, and Florida State's ads coming out and that that report last week of them talking openly about you know rattling the cage a little bit? How much do you think that threw a big you know bucket of gasoline on on all the realignment talk that was already out there? Yeah, you know the, the funny thing about that is if you really think it through. I, like I think what Florida State is advocating for here publicly really is about it's really about the revenue because I just don't at this point in time it doesn't really make sense that ESPN would let Florida State go to the SEC that doesn't really benefit ESPN very much right. when they are as invested in the ACC and the ACC network as they are and so I don't think that this stuff from from Florida State and Clemson I mean it, it makes sense to have the conversation. Um, and, I, and I'm glad you guys asked Mac about it like you did and, and, and got his real take on if that actually is beneficial because I think there's a lot of problems that can come with it. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think, yeah, that, that certainly fires things up a little bit. I, you know, we, we've known for a while that, like, um, lots of people have looked into um, how, you know, how ironclad is the ACC grant of rights and is there any way out. Um, and, you know, I, I think they're just in a very different situation with this thing locked up till 36 and – you know, as much as it might be interesting to say, okay, well, what, I mean, obviously the stress over the money difference is very real and it's going to be there for a long time, but like, what is the actual path to going to a different conference if you're Florida State or Clemson? Like, I think that's a little bit challenging. Yeah. I imagine how they felt the day where they're like, we have got this granite rights locked up forever. We are the smartest cats in the room to the day that that first TV deal with the SEC got renegotiated. And they were like, ah, Huh? <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, I think at the time you probably thought, man, this security is incredible. And it, it this is, it, it helps everybody sleep at night. But, um, you know, certainly as we've seen recently, um, and, and I mean, even the big 10, they signed this monster deal and they're still going to get another crack at it before the ACC will. I mean, that's just, um, it's just wild. And that's that, I think that thinking has certainly changed as people just, you know, almost like you're a, you know, pro athlete or something, you, you just you want to maximize your earning potential on this stuff and, and not do long deals. Max, you're going to need to know this. I know you got to go and have fun, obviously, with your, your kids. That's a great deal. Yeah, Children's uh, Museum next, guys. Yeah. You know? oh, I mean, nice. but, but important stuff over here. <laughs> when we had you on at the start of the segment, just so you'll know, you're now the hippest or the most hip guest we've ever had because in the background of Paul's phone was a song by Drake. And it was playing in the background while you came on with us. And so you are now at a level higher than anyone I can ever imagine. I don't think we've ever had wow. like Eminem or anyone else like hey, that on the here, show. Here's what happened. My phone just recognized it in you because I don't even have that song on my <laughs> yeah. phone. So when I called Max, it said, I got to play Drake for this dude. Yeah, it's pretty. Wait, wait, which Drake did I get? You got um, Lemon Pepper Freestyle. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> That'll work. That's a good I'm one. Good with that. All the youngins. Uh, <laughs> hey, Max, thank you, buddy. Appreciate your time. Thanks for being a part of the Take show. Care. That's Max Olson, theathletic.com. Both Emery and Garrett.
Our young pups both gave the thumbs up to lemon pepper and freestyle. Yeah, I I don't know what was going on. I thought 